So, uh, very good afternoon, everybody. I should say that I have a collaborator in Riyadh, and she visits Cambridge for the rain, not because of it. <clears throat> so, uh, it gives me enormous pleasure to welcome you today to the Gulf Research Centre's 14th annual Gulf meeting. Goodness, I can't believe it's so many. I think this is the fourth time I've spoken to you, so I understand if you're getting a bit fed up with me by now, but I really feel I'm part of the establishment. I should say this is my last presentation to you, so I stopped being PVC in two months. Uh, I'd like to take the opportunity to thank Dr. Abdulaziz Saga for yet another invitation, founder and chairman of the GRC, more generally for his contribution to this important initiative. Under your leadership, the Gulf Research Meeting has developed into the leading international research conference on the study of the Gulf region, showcasing the work of scholars from the Gulf and right across the globe bringing together many voices and perspectives in one location. I personally have active research interests in collaborating in the Gulf region, and I'm a frequent visitor to the area, so I know it well. So it gives me particular pleasure to give this welcoming address. It's very encouraging to see such a wide range of eminent speakers and panelists contributing to this meeting. These hold impressively senior government and other offices from the Gulf states and the European Union. Only lack of time present, prevents me from welcoming you again, but you've already been welcomed, and I think you can be overwelcomed. So, uh, but it's very kind of you to be here. Uh, there are some things that we need to comment on that we can't just ignore. Uh, the conflicts raging, for example, in the Middle East and Ukraine, are very sobering, and underline the need for collaboration and understanding typified by the GRC if we are to successfully address and solve these problems for global benefit. Some of these issues don't stop at boundaries. If one fails, we all fail. In my opinion, therefore, there has never been a greater need for the GRM, which is a real and important role to play as we transition through the next critical years. We can't overestimate the significance of those years and the young people who we will rely on providing solutions. As the Gulf states diversify their economies, it's important to continue to discuss and work through the challenges and opportunities posed by the social changes these bring. From global warming and climate change, I'd also add an aging population to that, uh, to the ethics of AI, which are widely debated and have already been mentioned in this meeting, uh, to others of increasing global focus. Of course, as I said, engaging young people as we go is primarily a function of this, given that, quite simply, they are the custodians of the future of the planet. The programme for the conference promises real engagement with a wide range of extremely important issues. The individual workshop themes are extremely impressive and I felt I should mention them. The role of the Gulf states within the new global order and the rising connectivity of the Gulf states with Asia, Africa and Europe. That's an enormous topic. Engagement strategies and the prospects for success of conflict resolution initiatives in the Gulf region and beyond of particular importance given the current situations in the Middle East and Ukraine. Energy transition and climate change issues in the Gulf states as well as a specific focus on new models and systems for regenerative environments and communities. Opportunities and challenges associated with the Gulf, uh, in the Gulf region associated with AI. Engagement with sport and family issues in Gulf states. Challenges inherent in the move to economic diversification and sustainability. And future migration scenarios to the Gulf states. Of course, all of these issues have an impact on regional behaviour, including the barriers that need to be overcome and the opportunities they present. These are areas that align closely and substantially with research interests at this university. And a number of our most acclaimed academics, such as Professor Vikram Dishpandi in engineering, Professor Sir Richard Friend in physics, and Professor Patrick Maxwell in clinical medicine, have found success with colleagues in the region on a wide range of topics. The Cambridge Department of the History of Art continues to engage closely with the Gulf on Islamic art, which is welcome and a much needed cultural admission to this university. 
And the university has been the beneficiary of considerable generosity from the Gulf region. This includes the Kuwait Foundation for the Advancement of Sciences, which established the Kuwait Mathematics Program over a decade ago. His Majesty Sultan uh, Qaboos of Oman, who established three professorships in modern Arabic, Abrahamic faiths and mathematics. And we are privileged to host the HRH Prince Al-Walid bin Talal Center of Islamic Studies, which promotes the understanding of the role of Islam and Muslims in the wider society in this global age. One of our main strengths here in Cambridge is that the university is truly bottom-up. It's a research-driven organization where individual researchers are free to pursue their own lines of inquiry and collaborations. And bringing together so many excellent critical minds here over the next few days promised us to spark new questions and collaborations. Quite frankly, Cambridge academics are free to think as they like. I'm therefore personally delighted that colleagues in this university are working in partnership to address global challenges impacting the Gulf region and elsewhere. I really and sincerely hope you have a productive workshop and I'm sure you will find Cambridge a welcoming and vibrant community of deep thinkers, if a rather damp one. I wish you all a very successful conference and it really is with great regret that I won't be presenting to you again. So thank you all. Thank you.